Dr. Sandhya from Indra IBF Hospital. Today I'll be dealing with the causes of infertility in a couple. The couple who is married since more than one year but you are not yet conceived is considered as infertility. So 40% of the couples have a male factor issues where they don't have pregnancy. 40% is because of the female factor and remaining 20% it both are affected. So coming to the male factor, we do a simple test in a male which is called semen analysis where we see the count of the sperm which should be more than 15 million per ml. The motility should be more than 40%, the morphology should be more than 4%. If any of this is affected, then we'll have to treat a male factor for a successful pregnancy. Few uh, males have a, something called as pyospermia, where they have infection in the sperm, which can be ruled out by the sperm culture. Few have azospermia, where we need to know the cause of the azospermia and need to treat accordingly. So coming to a female factor, where we see all the uh, um, through a, a blood investigation, through a scanning, to rule out what is the cause for an infertility in a female. So, coming to the history, we just ask simple history whether she is having a regular periods. Regular periods suggest as a regular ovulation and we see her age and the weight which is important. And in this uh, blood test, we do a simple test which is AMH prolactin test. So these both tests give us a significant uh, difference and significant information regarding a female fertility. Coming to an ultrasonography, which is done usually for a betterment transvaginal scan, where we see the ovary and we see the fallopian tubes and the endometrium and the uterus. So if the ovarian factor Usually, it should be 8 to 10 follicles on both sides of the ovaries. If the follicles is less than that, then we'll have to give the medications accordingly. And then we'll be seeing uh, the fallopian tubes. Usually, we do a HSG or sonosalphingography. HSG is done through x-ray, sonosalphingography is done through an ultrasound. So, we'll have to see the patency. Or a simple intraoperative that is hysterolaparoscopy we can do and see whether the tubes are open or not. So if the tubes are open then we can recommend the patient treatment accordingly. Then coming to the uterine factors. So we see whether the shape and size of the uterus is normal, whether the lining of the uterus that is called endometrium is normal because this endometrium will help the pregnant patient and the couple to conceive because it nourishes the embryo. So coming to the ovarian factor, if the ovarian reservoir is too low, that is low AMH or if the patient is having a PCOD where we have a multiple, multiple spawn follicles, that means the chances of conception is reduced so they need an assisted treatment. Coming to the fallopian tubes, if the fallopian tube is blocked or it is closed then or it is infectious or it has been infected and inflamed then we'll have to treat it accordingly coming to the uterus if the uterus is having a large fibroid or large adenomyosis or an endometriotic spots then we'll have to treat it accordingly if the endometrium which is the crucial stage in the pregnancy to happen which gives a nourishment to the embryo if that is thinned out which is called thin endometrium or that has past infection which is called as chronic endometritis or which has infection in the past due to because of the tuberculosis or some uh, surgical procedure has been taken place for example TNC which is common in India which causes the additions which is called Asherman syndrome so these all factors will have to rule out ideally the endometrium should be triple line on an ultrasonography so evaluating these both male and female is at most important for achieving a successful pregnancy so i would recommend for every infertile couple to visit to our center for the success rate to happen and to evaluate and to find out what is the cause for not conception and to start with the basic treatment till the ivf procedure thank you one and all